Have any of you noticed that I've got a new admirer? Uh, let's just say, at 28th of June, you had 1,769 subscribers, right? We are now on the 17th of August. So essentially, we're looking at around about 50 days or thereabouts. And in 50 days, <laughs> he's gone up to almost 27,000 subscribers. So he's put on 25,000 subscribers or 500 subscribers a day. And his work is shit. Hello and welcome, one and all, to the day you didn't know you could live without. Flat Earth Friday. Yes, that was our old friend Ranty Flat Earth from the Flat Earth Debate Team. He made a 20 minute video a couple of weeks ago that was literally watching my subscribers go up. He's so butthurt over the last takedown I gave him and in disbelief that anyone would subscribe to me that he believes that I have spent thousands and thousands of pounds purchasing subscribers and views. Well, there's over 50,000 of you now, and whilst I don't expect everyone to do this, if you fancy popping over to Ranty's video and letting him know that you're all real, then please, please do. I'll leave a link in the description to that video. Right, let's move on to the subject of today's video. Ranty's partner in crime, Sleeping Warrior, released a video on the same day as Ranty that was directed at yours truly here. Let's see what all the fuss is about. This is a challenge for No Simon Dan. I see what you've done there. Your wit and inventiveness is matched by no man. I've uh, seen a couple of your videos, No Simon Dan, and I have to uh, admit that I don't really see that much science from you. I see a lot of rhetoric, I see a lot of nonsense, but I don't see that much evidence, empirical stuff, you know, real science. Um, and let's remember the science definition that I'm referring to is the observation of the natural world. Um, and I'd like to know if you can answer me a question, because I'm a dumb flat earther. Oh man, don't put yourself down like that. I'll do my best to answer your question though, for sure. And you sit there with your gay little corner and your gay little haircut and your gay little sphere. Whoa, 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 hang on. That's a bit much, isn't it? You say all of that when the background of your video looks like a photo taken straight from the portfolio of a failed acting career. And I'm going to seek your empirical wisdom on this one, si no, Simon Dan, because I'd like to know how current science worked out the distance to the sun. OK, so you'd like to know how current science works out the distance to the sun. OK, I think I can manage that. Now, we're all told that it's 93 million miles away. However, we don't know where that measurement's come from. I was reliably told by a guy called Jimmy that it's been measured by many different people, one of which was a guy called Christian Hugens, and Cassini was the other, and then many other people ever since. But come on, guy. Explain how it works on a ball, though. Because we're on well, a ball and there's a sun that's 93 million miles away. And and who determined that? Who who, many, who measured, many, many who measured that? Many 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 many. Name oh, four. Through name eons four. of, of name. research. Uh, name, name three. Name three people who who determined the. Uh, in 1653, Cassina in 1672, and then more recently through the advent of technology, it also made it more accurate. But the problem is, Cassini and Hugens both took a presumption that Venus was the same size as the Earth. It was a bloody good guess though, wasn't it? Because it pretty much is the same size as the Earth. The discovery of scientific concepts goes through multiple stages of accuracy. Given the technology they had back then, this was a phenomenal guess. And when you're trying to find something out, this is what you do. You guess first. In general, we look for a new law by the following process. First, we guess it. <laughs> then we com Well, don't laugh. That's the really true. Then we compute the consequences of the guess to see what, if this is right, if this law that we guessed is right, we see what it would imply. And then we compare those computation results to nature. Or we say compared to experiment or experience compare it directly with observation to see if it if it works 
If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. And that simple statement is the key to science. It doesn't make any difference how beautiful your guess is, it doesn't make any difference how smart you are who made the guess, or what his name is. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. That's all there is to it. So when we look at how we measure the distance to the sun today, using modern techniques, we'll see that Huygens was proved correct, and he was actually extremely close to the value. Now what I'm going to do for you, no sign man Dan, I'm going to agree that you can have the presupposition of the Earth for the purposes of this demonstration. I don't agree with you on the presupposition of Earth with the radius, but I'm going to let you have it, because I want to see what the answer is for the distance to the Sun. I want to see where science tells us, proves, and provides all of this whole body of science that the rumpus claims for the distance to the sun. So you can, ac I will accept that you can use the earth is a sphere of a given size, and I will accept that you can use that to work everything else out. I want you to show me the current science with evidence to prove the point for where they got the distance to the sun. That's awfully kind of you, Mr. Warrior, but it's irrelevant. Don't need that information. Now, if you come back to me with Kepler's third law on interplanetary motion, that's fine. I understand that point, but don't patronise me with the uh, explanation for it, because I know it. OK, but we don't need that either. If you come back to me with Cassini or Christian Hugens, I'll respectfully point out to you that that was based on a presupposition. The presupposition being Venus was the same size as the Earth. I'm not going to let you have that one. Because it turned out, according to science, that they were pretty accurate with their guess. Which means it must have been superseded by some science that confirmed the distance to Venus. Without any presumptions whatsoever, no Simon Dan, can you show us how they got the 93 million mile distance to the sun, please? Don't be pedantic or semantic over the 93 million. We all know that distance, that number. But where did it come from? Can you science, bro? Indeed I can. Are you listening carefully? Good. Before we talk about the exact distance to the sun, I'm going to show you first that it is not close, or even quite far away, but in actual fact that it is extremely far away. Most of us know the story about how Eratosthenes discovered that the Earth was a sphere way back in 240 BC and as such calculated the Earth's circumference. If you don't know, here is a quick run through. Eratosthenes measured the angle of the sun's rays in two places, Alexandria and Syene. He did this on the 21st of June when the sun was directly overhead at midday in Syene. He then measured the angle of the shadow cast by a small pillar in Alexandria at the same time. Now he knew the distance between Syene and Alexandria, he paid a guy to pace it out, and he knew that that distance represented that the angle between the two cities, which he obtained from the shadow cast by his pillar in Alexandria. That allowed him to calculate the full circumference of the Earth. Now, most flat earthers will tell you that this proves nothing, because the same result can happen on a flat plane. They believe a close sun would give you the same results. But this would indicate that the light from a close sun would not be parallel. Mr. Warrior and co will say we are presupposing a sphere here, but I'm going to show you how his results meant it couldn't be anything other than a sphere. That's because the light from the sun is parallel and I can prove it. The following is fully credited to Conspiracy Cats. Please go out and check out his channel. A convex lens can be purchased for a very small amount. One of the things that a lens has is a focal length. This is the distance from the centre of the lens to the point that focuses any image. Here is an example showing it working with lasers. Now, 
The thing is, the focal length will only be correct if the light coming through the lens comes through parallel. So, sleeping warrior, go and purchase a lens, stand outside on a sunny day in your back garden and focus the sun's light onto a piece of paper. You will find the distance between the lens and the piece of paper will match the focal length. That means the sun's light is parallel, which can only mean it is extremely far away. This in turn means Eratosthenes' experiment could only have meant a spherical Earth. This simple experiment destroys a close sun and as such, a flat Earth. Thanks, conspiracy cats. Right, you want to know though how current science gets the exact distance to the sun. Not a problem. When Venus is at greatest elongation, we use radar to determine the distance. Greatest elongation is the point whereby Venus is furthest from the sun in our sky. I noticed in your comments though that if I go along this route, you've got a bit of an issue. This is what you said. If you go to radar and Venus, the question then becomes how a successful ping can happen on a sphere that's orbiting the sun, rotating itself and also curved. The receiver is no longer in the same place physically to actually receive the ping. So assuming the ping travels in straight lines and it takes 3.8 mi minutes to traverse the 30 million miles or so it's meant to be, let's round down to seven minutes for the relay time. In that time, the Earth is meant to have physically rotated and orbited. Plus, it's got a new angle of observation to it. So how does the technology compensation for these movements? Well, seven minutes is not really a long time when we're talking about movement along an orbit, especially one as big as ours. Besides, there isn't a single beam, yet another example of a one-dimensional thinking. Radar radi radiates out like so. We do take into account Doppler shifts due to curvature and rotation though, and we adjust the results accordingly because of that. Once we ascertain the distance to Venus, the rest is secondary school trigonometry. If you need some help with that, let me know. The position of Venus will mean it forms a right angle with the sun. And we know that at elongation, there's a difference in the sky between Venus and the sun of around 46 degrees. From here, as I said, it's basic trigonometry to find the hypotenuse of the triangle, which will be our distance to the sun. So there you have it. I hope that was enough science for you, buddy. I'm sure you'll come back at me though with a load of word salad. Unless of course you've got something constructive to say. I'm a dumb flat earther. Brilliant. This now marks the end of my dealings with Sleeping Warrior. Oh, he thinks I've purchased subscribers too. So if you all feel the need to also let him know that you're all real, that'd be good too. I'll put a link to his video in the description. Thank you all so much for being here. I am truly honored to have so many subscribers. If you're interested in joining the Patreon team, I'll leave a link in the description. There's loads of rewards up for grabs there. And you can also get yourself a t-shirt too, if you want one of those as well. Thank you all again, and I'll see you next time. Bye, Ranty.